Steve, tell me more about the Overlook. Yes, the Pommetier Overlook, which is located on the west end of our garden. Uh, that was an area we constructed through private donations about uh, 18 years ago now. And uh, so it's been there a while, but it's a, a great place to sit and enjoy the beauty of the Pommetier River Valley. It overlooks the city, the University of Minnesota Moores, and we're very fortunate that it, it connects with the trail system that is part of the Pommetier City Park, which eventually leads up into the garden too. So, but uh, if you're wanting an awesome area to sit down and enjoy the, the sunset uh, in a west central Minnesota, it's the perfect area to uh, view that. And it's, again, we talked about the pollinator, that 17 acres that we've renovated. It is connected with that too. So it is a beautiful site. And there's parking there. And it's part of the whole expansion to the west where we brought in a lot of suggested uh, trees and shrubs that are also part of that expansion area. Well, and there's also a children's area, right? Yes, we have University of Minnesota Children's Garden, which was created probably about uh, 20, 25 years ago, uh, where we're trying to teach children the important role that plants play in our daily lives. Um, and uh, we've had educational classes there off and on throughout the years. But the beauty of the children's garden is you can come here with your children or grandchildren or whatever else, and it's self-guided. There are brochures there. There are areas that you can uh, educate yourself about, you know, pollinators and, and birds and uh, sensory garden and whatever else, which is all told about in some signage or some pamphlets or whatnot. But uh, um, this next year, we're very, very fortunate. We received some money from a donor where we're going to hire a uh, intern uh, from an uh, education intern from the University of Minnesota Morris that's going to help us develop new curriculum for that during the winter semester and then provide that to, you know, uh, families and uh, educational people that might want to use the Children's Garden now and into the future. It's a grant that is going to be with us for about five years. If people come and want to look for those brochures, and where do they go to find those? All our brochures are located throughout the entire display garden, from you know the water garden to uh, you know ornamental grasses to hostas or whatever. They are in brochure boxes located throughout the garden. And there are two kiosks, one on the west end, one on the east end, that have more uh, educational material for you to look at. Steve, you mentioned that people come for horticulture night. Can people come anytime? Oh yes, yeah. The garden is always open from dawn to dusk at, uh, during the growing season. Uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's open all the time. So feel free to come here. We've got some parking right along uh, on the west end and on the east end. So uh, enjoy the garden at any time. And is there a fee to come in? Nope, no fee. Everything is free. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, as beautiful as things are, I'm sure you've won some awards and accolades. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I've been very fortunate. Uh, I, I did mention earlier the annual flower trial where, and with my connection with the All-American selections and that display and that research has brought in people from all over the world that want to uh, trial their flowers with us. We have uh, from Israel and we have uh, from the Netherlands, we have from Japan, um, Thailand, you know, and those that want to trial flowers with us, they have brokers in the United States that sell their flowers, you know, to the major plant companies, but that's been a huge achievement. A couple years ago, we had a, a, a plant company a, from a major plant company visit our garden during horticulture night, and he provides us with uh, a, numerous flowers that we trial in the annual flower trials. And uh, when he was here, uh, he really thought quite highly of what we were doing here. And so we interviewed him and it went in our local paper and we've used it forever on our website or whatever. But uh, he's traveled the world, and uh, but he said this garden here ranks in the upper 10% of all the display gardens within the United States. So that was, and uh, he's coming back again this year. So uh, uh, we really, uh, you know, treasure those quotes like that because that uh, we're, we're doing a good job with all the help that has helped us create this beautiful display garden. Well, that's a real feather in your cap, and it's a real testament to the beauty and the wonderful job that you've done here in your career. Well, I've enjoyed my job. I mean, uh, I still look forward to every day when I come to work, and uh, for, you know, for the past 45 years I've been here, and uh, I look back and, uh, you know, I've had some unbelievable guidance through administrators and other plant scientists that helped us uh, become the garden that we are today. But we've been recognized on 
some of the major uh, TV networks within the metro area for our display garden. And uh, it's a hidden treasure in west central Minnesota. And not everybody knows about us. So if people come here from far away, or, you know, we've done a good job. It's taken a lot of people, a lot of donors, and a lot of volunteers to be where we're at today. So I'm very proud of all the people that have supported us. Well, I'll have you know that whenever we get company, we're out here and our family now goes back and says, you should see those gardens. Okay, yeah, that's good to hear. Mm -hmm. So we're encouraging everybody to come and visit the gardens in Morris. Yes, that would be nice. Well, Steve, thank you so much for telling us about the gardens and the history of the gardens and Hort Night, too. Yes, thank you for having me.